How's it going, YouTube? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube. Trying to... I don't know. You know, it's too bright outside and this ring light's not really doing that good of a job right now. But anyways, how's it going, everyone? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video. Today's video, I want to go over everything else in a bug bounty report thing. Uh, that I did not cover in my previous video. Uh, my previous video, I go over my recon methodology, content discovery, but there's that whole portion where I talk about the exploitation part you won't really see anywhere on YouTube, mainly because it's sensitive data to the company and you're breaking TOS terms of service and all sorts of things when you do that, uh, when you put that onto YouTube. <clears throat> so the exploitation part you won't find on there. However, bug crowd, 101 covers pretty much everything that you need to know about bug bounties uh, and then as well as the web application hackers handbook I believe that's what it's called also covers a lot of exploitation stuff now I've mentioned this before and I'm gonna mention it again bug bounties are not my Area of expertise. I mainly just do a few bug bounties like every year <clears throat> but since there's such demand in my comments about, you know, different things I do in bug bounties, I'm just going to go ahead and share them. Now, before I get into this, I just want to reiterate, I'm not going to handhold a single person in the comments section to do anything. I'm not going to teach you how to set up a Raspberry Pi from start to finish and, you know, everything in between. I just want to lead you to water and then let you go from there. Um, because when I was a, a brand new to security, I didn't know what I didn't know and that really sucks So I'm just gonna give you guys what you don't know and then let you figure out it uh, Figure out the stuff from there because that's the best way to learn and that's the best way to have that Mentality where no one owes you anything and it's all online already. So so uh, I, I talk about in my previous video about like I said content discovery when I do bug bounties, I don't focus on web app stuff, and that sounds kind of odd, uh, but I don't. I'm not I'm not a burp ninja or anything like that. That's just not my cup of tea. I know how to use it, but I don't. It's not my main method. I find the most value when I do when I find information disclose or information leakage <clears throat> uh, bugs. They're not even bugs. It's just poor security. Um, and what that means is I look for hard coded credentials and code. I look for, you know, confidential data on S3 buckets and all this stuff that isn't in scope on the, you know, the bug bounty, you know, program, but it's not out of scope. It's kind of no scope. Oh, no scope. Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, but I've, I've reported a couple before. Uh, one of them ended up being a dupe. Uh, and another one actually ended up getting resolved. That was cool. Uh, most of the time those are rated uh, high or critical. All you got to do is most uh, Hacker One reports are public and you can just Google dorkhacker1.com in text report or whatever credential, hard coded credential or something. And you'll see reports and they're usually all high or critical if they're legitimate. When I find hard coded credentials, the main things that I got burnt uh, from in the past is making sure that it is an actual uh, credentials. And I'm not saying going testing credentials out. Um, because that's, a, again, against TOS, uh, which is beyond exploitation. That is technically an exploit, in my opinion. So if you find hard-coded creds, you know, report it. But the way you check for it is if, like, in the directory path on GitHub, it says test or sample or foo or anything like that that could uh, make it seem like this is just mock data. I wouldn't report it because they'll just close it out as NA or um, informational or... Uh, whatever, um, and it goes against your score on Hacker One. And if you, you know, submit a ton of reports, you can't, you can't use Hacker One anymore. So if it looks legitimate and the path looks legitimate and the and the code looks legitimate, then yes, report it. I would say you're looking at my screen right now. I would say, you know, when you when you go on as <clears throat> asset, uh, you don't need to click any of this. Um, when you hit report, um, it'll say you didn't include an asset. That you just say okay. Uh, weakness, so I would say familiarize yourself with all these CWEs, uh, common weaknesses and enumerations, or common weakness enumeration, and just basically tells you, you know, what happened. So for me, 
um, hard coded credentials, um, CWE798. That's usually what I use. Uh, and then severity, these are just CVSS. Um, most of the time, if you find hard coded creds, you don't really need to uh, calculate CVSS um, because you don't know the impact of it. Um, however, if you find actual bugs, then this is where you kind of use it. And I could go over CVSS a little bit uh, in a, probably a different video. Uh, a crucial part of uh, when you find a bug is actually making a good report that is concise, but you know, the hacker one team or bug crowd team or whoever is reading it understands what the issue is because they're ultimately going to be the ones triaging it before they send it out to the to the you know vrp program so a, a nice it says clear and concise title so what i would put in here is hard-coded credentials found on github or gitlab or whatever that is clear and concise uh, a summary <clears throat> of the vulnerability uh you could say uh, hard-coded credentials were found in this package on this github page um, it appears it's linked to you know this package um, and it's admin credentials in a you know mongodb you know whatever uh, and then steps to reproduce again you just explain everything from step one to step you know whatever um, and then supporting material so like on github you can actually go and view the code look at the line and create a permalink and it will actually make a, <clears throat> a direct URL to that part of the code. Um, and you can, it'll, it'll just take you straight there. It's like, okay, admin equals whatever, password equals whatever. Uh, and you put that there and you can also add a screenshot. So another tool that I use is called Wappalizer and it's a pretty good tool to enumerate the different technologies used on a web page. And it's just a browser add-on uh, right here. So I'll click on it. So Flickr uses um, Amazon CloudFront, Adobe DTM, uh, uh, YUI 3.16.0, Moment.js, and then Amazon Web Services. So it kind of gives us a little bit of uh, information as far as what this website's running. Uh, but this is just the main page. But uh, what you could do is like these JavaScript libraries or whatever library, you could look it up like yui 3.16.0 vulnerabilities but let's say this it said it's like running apache struts i don't know i'm just i'm just making stuff at this point apache struts uh 2.3.32 uh, um and then you type in cve uh, cvedetails.com will tell you all the you know uh, common vulnerabilities and exposures for that specific product so right here, uh, you can see, okay, uh, you know, we check Wappalizer. Let's pretend this one says, you know, Apache Struts uh, 2.3.31. Uh, you can see right here, there is a CVSS 10.0 uh, vulnerability for it. Remote code execution. Uh, you can look it up. Uh, you click on the CVE right there. Uh, complete, you know, it's the worst it could be. It's This is like the worst um, vulnerability you can find. You can read a little bit about the vulnerability right there. Uh, you can also look up, you know, CVE number, how to exploit. Uh, and another tip that I've used in the past is actually looking at previous reports uh, on HackerOne. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to take the CVE, I'm going to go into Googs, and I'm going to do site hackerone.com in text, in quotes. Oh, oh HackerOne1. One. Um, let's see. Okay, so there wasn't any report. So that's good. Um, let's look up uh, information disclosure. So you can see like different reports. But anyways, uh, yeah, sorry that I couldn't give too many more details. Like I said, you're, I don't do bug bounties that much, so... I'm not a good resource for any questions in regards to that. I can help with making reports. When I say help, I'm not going to help everyone. Um, but if you want mentoring sessions and you know pay for that, I can definitely help out where I can. I don't want to mentor people on uh, you know bug bounties or anything because it's it's not where I could talk about. But I could talk about blue team operations and stuff like that. Um, and if you want to pay for mentorship, which you know. Could be a thing in the future, I guess. Uh, yeah, I can help you zero to hero, I guess. Um, but anyways, that's it for today's video. If you guys enjoy content like this, please hit the subscribe button. 
hit the like button, uh, the bell notification. If you can share this video everywhere, that would be awesome. Uh, I think I just passed 600 subs as well. I think my last video I talked about, I just passed 500. Uh, so yeah, and also apologies for the delay or lack of videos lately. Like I've said in a few other videos, I started a new job. So I've been really busy with that, uh, where I'm finding some good amount of time on the weekends especially with you know everything going on in the world right now uh to make videos so um sorry this wasn't an OSINT video like i said um but you know maybe i make another OSINT video today after i edit this video so anyways you all take care goodbye